Hey everybody, welcome back to another SUP Border video. It's time again to do another big pump test. We do this probably twice a year when a new brand comes up with a new pump that they want to put up against the other leading pumps on the market. About six months ago, we did the Bravo Super and we put that up against the Titan and the HP5. Now it's GRI's turn. They said they have got a new, easier, faster pump, really comparing against to the new Bravo Super, but also they want to put it up against the granddaddy of pumps, the Red Paddle Co Titan and the HP5 and their new HP6 as well. So pumps have definitely come on a long way from four or five years ago and year on year they're definitely getting easier to pump and we're getting more air in our boards than ever before. The Red Puddle Co Titan definitely needs credit where it's due. That was the first big pump that got us putting a lot of air in our boards and a lot of air quite quickly and definitely it started a new generation of pumps and the manufacturers are working harder to keep up with the Red Paddle Co Titan. So it's just this is why the Titan is still in the test. It's still one of the fastest and easiest pumps to use in the market and it's definitely one that should be compared against. But now in 2019 and just about to come into 2020, there's definitely a clear divide line between the bigger double chamber pumps and the new, more efficient, lightweight, single chamber pumps that work on a double action. So the double chamber pumps, the bigger ones, the Red Paddle Co Titan just works on the downstroke, and has a large amount of air in the two chambers, which gets the air in the board quickly. The newer generation of double action pumps work on the upstroke and on the downstroke are putting air into your board and they are a little bit easier easier to use, definitely lighter weight if you're packing them down and that really is important if you're a touring ice upper or somebody that doesn't want to carry a bulky pump around. But there are still the crossovers in brands like GRI who make the HP5 and the HP6, their newer one, which is a double action, double chamber, full on volume putting in your board pump, but they are still not as lightweight and maybe not as efficient as the single chamber double action pumps. But that's what this test is about. We're gonna put them all together, testing up an inflatable ice up to 15 PSI, and the ice up is 165 liters. Not a massive board, but it gives us a good datum to work out which pumps are the fastest and which pumps are the easiest too. Lucy was our pump tester again this time. It's great to have an average weight of person doing these pump tests. If you put a bigger person doing these pump tests, obviously they're gonna find it easier to push the pressure down and get the air into the boards. So we have done SUP border videos for all of these pumps before. So if you want to find out more information about the specific pump, maybe certain features it has, check out those videos. I'll make sure the links are in the description below. So let's have a quick run through of the weights of these pumps and what PSI pressures these pumps can all go to. So looking at the biggest and heaviest pump that we have on test at the moment, you have the GRI HP5. It weighs 2,400 grams and it has a maximum pressure of 26 PSI. Moving down from that, we have the Red Paddle Co Titan, the granddaddy of the pumps, weighs 2,130 grams and it has a max PSI pressure of 29. Then we've got the GRI HP6, which is a newer version of the HP5. They wanted to make it a slightly smaller, a bit lighter, and they have done that. They brought the weight down to 1,800 grams and the PSI pressure is right up there at 30 PSI. Then we have one of our test winners so far. We have the Bravo Super that weighs 1,180 grams. It's a really lightweight pump and it has a maximum pressure of 29 PSI. Then we have the two new pumps from GRI, the HP8 and the HP9. The HP9 is a slightly bigger volume pump and it only has a recommended pressure of 20 PSI and it weighs 970 grams. The HP8 is a slightly thinner pump. It can go up to a recommended PSI pressure of 26 and it only weighs 900 grams, so it's a little bit lighter. And these are the two pumps that GRI really wanted to put up against the new Bravo Super because they're saying it is the strong contender for the lightest and fastest pump on the market. So looking at the times and the effort needed to pump this board to 15 PSI, remember this is a 165 litre board, so it's not a massive board, which is going to keep the times down, but it's also going to keep our tester, Lucy, at that similar area of fatigue. If she was pumping up a 300 litre board every time, on the sixth pump, she's going to be pretty tired out and it is going to make a difference to the readings. Lucy was also wearing a heart rate monitor so we can make sure she recovered fully and she got her beats per minute down to the same point every single time she started pumping and when we deflated the board we sucked the air out each time getting the board to the same level so they're all as equal as possible when we do this test. So the first pump we tested was the Red Apollo Co Titan and it did it in a total time of three minutes and three seconds. Then the second pump that we tested was the Bravo Super and that did it in two minutes forty. 
Then we moved on to the new GRI HP9, which is the bigger version. The HP8 is the slightly smaller one, and that did it in two minutes and 25 seconds, so quicker again. Then we moved on to the GRI HP8, and that did it in two minutes and 41 seconds, so a little bit slower than the original Bravo Super. Then we move on to the GRI big pumps, the double chamber, double action pumps. These pumps have three settings that you can select when you're pumping up your board. The HP6, the newer one, did it in two minutes and 36, and the bigger HP5 did it in two minutes and 34. So not a massive saving on time there. They are quicker than the Titan, and they're a little bit quicker than the Bravo. But it's interesting, because these pumps have three different dials, you've got a lot of choice about when you switch your pump over and at what level you switch it over to so there is a little bit to bear in mind that these pumps probably could be faster if you got to know your pump and knew exactly at what pressure you'd be switching over on the front of the dial here so we did measure the maximum heart rate as well the heart rate's an interesting one because they are fairly similar the two closest pumps were actually the hp9 and the red Paddleco titan both sitting around 95 beats a minute the other pumps are all about 105 110 there isn't a massive amount of data that we think will benefit the review in there but definitely there is some other things that we're going to speak about in a minute when it comes to effort and things Lucy found that will definitely make more of a difference. So you can see there from the times that actually the GRI new pumps are some of the fastest pumps on the market. Definitely the new HP9 is the quickest pump that we've tested and the HP8 is very, very close, virtually the same time as the Bravo Super. So these pumps definitely are up there. They are the lightest pumps and they are the quickest pumps on the market to date. The big pumps are still up there, not far behind. There really is a more of a dividing line now between the double chamber pumps to the single chamber double action pumps. These pumps are generally a little bit easier to use. They're a little bit lighter on your arms because you're pushing less volume down in one go. These bigger double action pumps do require a little bit more force, but you are getting a larger amount of air in the board in one go. So maybe if you're gonna be pumping up big ice ups, big race ups, big touring ups, over time, these will be easier to use because you're gonna need less downstrokes to get a large amount of air in than you would do these. These are a slightly higher cadence pump, so they probably are better for the more all-round base boards in general. Bigger ice up touring racing boards, probably still better off in the long term looking at these bigger chambered pumps. Things that make pumps easy to use, apart from physically pushing the air up and down, is how easy they are to hold on, how good are the handles. Definitely the new HP8 and HP9, they have the best handles out of all of these pumps here. Very, very well suited to your palm. You can almost let go of the handle when you're pumping up and down, and you can get a large amount of pressure in for your palms, which obviously pushes the air into the board easier. Handles make a big difference, and then looking at the bottom, the foot pegs make a difference as well. All of the double chamber pumps have a nicely set up wide foot base because they're actually a wider base pump. When you're pumping up your board, you don't want to have your feet really close together. You actually want to have your feet a little bit wider apart. So these double chamber pumps actually work really well for that. All of the single chamber double action pumps have wide foot pegs as well, but the new GRI bases are slightly better. They're a bit more angled to your feet and they're a little bit more raked back than a super is. The other thing that makes a difference is your switching gear. How easy is it to go from double chamber to single chamber or double action to single action? The Red Palico Titan still has probably one of the easiest switching gears. It's very easy. It's just a push in red knob. It goes at the back. Very simple to understand. The two GRI HP5 and the HP6 have a very nice switching knob. It's a little bit stiffer to use, but definitely the new HP6 is got easier and a little bit more lightweight. But again, as I said earlier, it's something you're gonna have to tune and understand in time when you're using your pump, which setting is best for you at which pressure. The pumps on this side all have a lever system at the back of the pump which switches from double action to single action and again the GRIs are slightly easier than the Bravo. Still very easy using the Bravo but the GRI just flips over without any force really on your fingers. Another really important thing is your dial, is your visual aid to see where your pressure is on your board. The Red Paddleco Titan has the easiest dial still to read. Very easy, nicely printed on. 
it's got your ISAP measurements in there, still one of the easiest dials to use. The other dials are still okay to use, they're still color coded and they will work fine and when you understand where, where your dial is going to it's not going to be a problem but still the Red Titan has the best dial overall. The GRIs here are fine and probably the least refined dial is actually the Bravo Super, hasn't got any color coding on it. But to be fair to this pump, this is straight from the manufacturer and a lot of times when you get pumps with your ISUPs, the brand themselves will actually color code that dial as well. But having said that, there is one thing that this Bravo has over all of these pumps. The dial doesn't move. It stays on the main pump body and not on the handle. All of the other pumps you're going to be pumping up and down in your pressure gate is on the handle. And that can actually get very off-putting as you're going up and down and you're watching your pressure dial come up and down to your face. So for the downside of not having a very good pressure gauge, it has got one of the best place pressure gauges out of all of them. But another thing that makes a massive difference to the amount of effort you need to put in to get the air in your board is actually the diameter of the pump. And this is a big difference between the HP9 and the HP8. The HP9 is a faster based pump, but you can't get such a higher PSI pressure. It only has a maximum pressure of 20 PSI and the HP8 goes all the way up to 26. And in our test, a really good example is Lucy found that she could easily get to 15 PSI with both of these pumps, but when she wanted to go a bit further, up to 20 PSI, because we did that as well, she struggled with the HP9 to get that air pressure down the pump and into the board, and she found it much easier with the HP8. So if you want to get your board to higher pressures, bear that in mind as well. And finishing off with cons and negatives that brands could change to make them better in the future. Removable foot pegs. None of these have got removable foot pegs. It would be a great thing if you could be able to take the foot peg off to get it in your ice up and roll it up even smaller. The Bravo has got removable handles, but the foot pegs are still fixed. So it does make it a little bit more compact, but not as compact as if you could take the foot pegs off. Obviously that costs more money, but when you're rolling up your ice up, and especially if you're going in a touring environment, which a lot more of you are doing now, that will make a difference. The weight of the pumps is always something that needs to come down. These pumps on this side are really nice and light and I can't see them getting any lighter. The bigger double chamber pumps could get lighter, but it's just definitely a con for the bigger pumps. One disadvantage except the Bravo Super. The Bravo Super has a deflation as well. It's the only pump that deflates as well as inflates. And if you're using boards like the newer double chamber pumps that a lot of the brands have got now with the chamber on the inside of the board, sometimes when you roll your board up the valve isn't the right way around and it can become really hard to get all of that air out of your board if you have a pump that deflates as well as inflates you can suck that air out of the board really easily so that's a big thumbs up for us for the Bravo Super so there we go, that's another SUP board, a big pump test. All of these pumps are very good. They are gonna suit lots of different people from big high capacity pumps to the general all round lighter base pumps. They are getting faster and they are definitely getting lighter and they're getting easy to use. Definitely, we are gonna push the standout pumps more to the GRI this time. They are the fastest pump and they have the nicest handles and foot pegs. The Bravo's still in there with one of the top pumps in the market and the big pumps are still in there and the old granddaddy of pumps, the Red Paddle Co Titan, is still worth having. Thank you very much, I hope you enjoyed that video. Like it, comment, tell us how we can improve the test for future and we'll see you next time on another Subboarder video.